let's discuss the basic concepts of sampling. If we have a time domain signal, which might be a recording of my voice, or an electric signal, or the temperature over the sp uh, space of days, or whatever that signal is, you have a time domain signal, and it's going to have a Fourier transform, of course. Now let's assume, I'm just going to say it's a band-limited signal, and let me just draw a general function like this, and say that, let's assume it's a band-limited function between uh, less than the cut, some sort of cutoff frequency. So this is our signal of interest, and it has a Fourier transform. It's band limited, so it exists between these frequencies and is zero everywhere else. This is a common type of signal. Now we want to sample this signal. So what do we do to sample the signal? Well, if we multiply it in the time domain by some delta functions, then we will get the values of the signal at the times of those delta functions uh, times the delta functions. So here's a sequence of delta functions and in the time domain uniformly spaced and if we multiply these two together it will give us a waveform in the time domain which is the value which has the values of the height of that waveform uh, at the times when the samples are. So this time here is a negative sample, the next one here is a little bit positive, this one here is a bit more positive, this one here is negative again, this one here is a little bit positive, uh, this one here is negative. So this is our sampled waveform. This is xt times pt. This is our sampled waveform. We want to understand what that happens to that in the frequency domain. So the frequency, the Fourier transform of a sequence of delta functions is also a sequence of delta functions but in the frequency domain. And this is on a lot of standard Fourier transform tables. Uh, are given this. And this is, so the height of this is if these are sampled at t and 2t, then the height of this here is 2 pi divided by t, and they're occurring at omega s, where omega s equals 2 pi divided by capital T. So this is 2 omega s, 3 omega s, minus omega s, and so on. Okay, so this is what the Fourier transform of this is. Now, what is happening in the frequency domain? Well, we've got a convolution in the frequency domain because we had a multiplication in the time domain. Multiplication in the time domain equals a convolution in the frequency domain. Now, what do we have when we convolve, what do we get when we convolve a function with a delta function? Well, we get that function located at the place of the delta function. So let's assume just for a moment that Ws is bigger than W, uh, bigger than 2 times Wc. So I haven't drawn it exactly that way, I should have drawn these delta functions further out because Ws is twice more than twice WC. Let's assume that. So just imagine this one with these delta functions spread out a little bit more. Then I'm going to try and draw that here because we are multiplying in the time domain, we are convolving in the frequency domain. So when we convolve something with a delta function, just to repeat, the function appears at the location where the delta function is. So here we've got a sequence of delta functions so this function is going to appear at each of those delta function locations. So this is what we're going to get here. Uh, so don't forget, uh, remember that I'm drawing this for the case where omega s is bigger than twice wc. So this is wc, this is 
WS. And at 2WS, there's going to be another one because convolving, I'll say it again, convolving with the delta function, the function is going to be moved and centered on the delta function. So there's a sequence of delta functions here, so we're going to get a sequence of these functions. So this is the Fourier transform of our sampled waveform. And it's interesting to note what happens if we don't sample at a high enough frequency. So here WS was twice, more than twice WC. If it was less than that, then these two would overlap. And that's an important concept in sampling, is that if you want to be able to recover the signal from the sampled version, this is the sampled version, the Fourier transform of the sampled version, if you want to be able to recover the signal, you could multiply these by zero and recover the original signal. But if you didn't sample fast enough and you had WS less than twice WC, then the edges of these would overlap, meaning that the resultant waveform is the addition of the two. The resultant waveform will be a waveform that looks like this. 2WS and and that's this would be the resultant waveform and you could no longer go back and recover the original waveform because the resultant waveform is this function here over the top which is not easy it's not possible to go back to the original waveform from having this waveform so if you don't sample at more than twice the highest frequency component of your signal, then you can't reconstruct your signal.